Hey, welcome back. This is 5-3. Polynomial functions, next section in Algebra 2. Hopefully you did all right with the last section, and we're moving on to this section. So, uh, example type 1, uh, degrees and leading coefficients. The last video, we talked a little bit about degrees. Remember, this is the, uh, the degree is the largest exponent value. Okay, now in the last video, uh, we mentioned we had degrees that were um, potentially like x's and y's or x, y's and z's, multiple variables, and we had to add those together. In this case, we're going to keep it very simple and have it just as a single variable, uh, and then the largest one of those. Okay, so the largest degree here is 5, 3, 2. Well, that's 5, right? So the degree here is 5. Now, that's for degree, right? The leading coefficient is just the number in front of the largest degree. So if the degree is 5, what's the number in front? Well, that's negative 2. So the leading coefficient is negative 2. Leading coefficient LC. Okay, I can abbreviate. That's okay. Not a big deal. Uh, this one here, second one here. Uh, well, it looks like we have 8. Okay, so the degree is 8. And then the leading coefficient is negative 0.6 or negative 0 0.6. Either way is fine. doesn't really matter. Uh, J of x here. Uh, it looks like it's a 3, okay, because this is 3, 2, 1. And this x technically can come up top as x to the negative 1. Okay, so 4x to the negative 1. Um, and so I have, a neg I have positive 3, so the degree is 3. The leading coefficient is 5, right? So I'm going to let you guys pause the video here and uh, see what you guys come up with. Hey, what's up, guys? I'm Justin Bieber. Pause the video, please. Okay, the degree is 7. So you don't actually have to multiply all of this stuff out uh, because this one here, if I actually multiply it out, it's like r to the third plus and some other stuff there. So that's the highest one there. Well, this is another r, so that becomes r to the four. And then if I multiply it here, actually, it's sorry, it's r to the 8, not not 7. Oof, man, almost had it wrong. So I, it's r to the 8. So that 4 plus this 4 becomes r to the 8. So that's why the degree is 8. And then since all of these are 1, the coefficient in front of all those r's is 1. If I multiply it by that 3 that's out front, that's how I get the leading coefficient is 3. All right, this is uh, part number two, example type two in section 5.3. And this is function values of variables. And uh, this one's not going to be too bad, but you got to understand basic algebra. And if you can't understand basic algebra, then you're going to have a hard time. So uh, function values, basically it's saying that f of x is equal to some value. Okay, so just like here, f of x is there, h of x doesn't really matter what it is. Then it's going to say find something if f of x is equal to that thing. Okay, so what we're going to do is where it says find f of 3c minus 4, this is going to pretend like it's the x in our f of x. So wherever there's an x, I'm going to replace it with 3c minus 4. So I'm going to get 3c minus 4 squared because that's x squared plus two times 3c minus 4 minus 3 so that's the first piece okay then I have this minus f of c here and that all is saying is wherever the x is put a c in it okay just replace it with the c so I am going to minus all of the stuff over here so that's minus c squared plus 2c minus 3. You notice the minus is there, so I have to distribute that to get minus c squared minus 2c plus 3. Then I have to do all of this work over here. 3c minus 4 squared, you should probably use a box maybe, right? Or you can multiply a FOIL or whatever you got to do, however you did this in the first section of Algebra 2, and really in Algebra 1, because this is an Algebra 1 skill. You should be able to do this. That's 9c squared minus uh, 24c plus 16. Then you distribute here, distribute there. So that's plus 6c minus 8 minus 3 because that 3 stays. Now I just want to combine like terms like I did in the last video. 
So 9c squared and minus c squared is 8c squared. Uh, negative 24c plus 6c is negative 18c. Uh, minus 2c. So negative 18 minus 2 is negative 20c. And then I have 16 minus 8 is 8. Minus 3 is 5. Plus 3 is 8. So plus 8. So that is what you arrive at once you manipulate it in such a way. Okay, the last one over here. Um, this is saying h of negative 4d plus 3 minus 0.5 of h of d if all of h of x is that. It's the same general concept. So I'm going to take the negative 4d plus 3 and I'm going to replace the x's. So I get 2 times uh, negative 4d plus 3 squared plus 5 times negative 4d plus 3 plus 3 because that's where that plus 3 goes minus okay this is gonna be a long one minus 0 0.5 0 0.5 of h of d so just like in this one here it was f of c just put in c you do the same thing here you put the d in so it's 2d squared plus 5d plus 3 and I gotta distribute just like I did on the other side so that's going to be negative d squared uh, minus 2.5 d minus 1.5. Okay. Um, so <clears throat> now what? Well, now I got to do this top piece right here, right up in there. Okay, I got to do that piece. So I'm going to uh, erase some of this stuff over here, mainly because I need more room. Uh, hopefully, you got all that stuff written down. Okay, so I'm going to multiply negative 4d plus 3 squared. So a box or foil or distribute, whatever you got to do. And I get 16d squared uh, minus, minus 24d uh, plus 9. That is all being multiplied by 2 because that 2 out front. So that's 32d squared minus uh, 48d plus 18. Then I have to multiply that in that. So that's negative 20d. Oh man, this is a lot of work. So let's, man, okay, let's let's bring all this stuff down. So I got 32d squared minus 48d plus 18. Now distribute, which is minus 20d uh, plus 15 plus 3, which is that 3. And then all of this stuff here, minus d squared minus 2.5d minus 1.5. So now let's clear it up. I got a d squared there and a d squared here. That gives me 31d squared. I got a 48d negative minus 20, which is negative 68, minus 2.5, which is negative 70.5.5d. I got an 18 plus a 15 plus a 3, so that's 36. 36 minus 1.5 is 34.5 plus 34.5. Five. So that's a lot of work on that one. Um, you got to keep track of your organization. Um, mine wasn't very good, but I was I was able to not screw anything up, so I should be okay. Um, but there you go. And uh, this is uh, example type number three. But before we get into example type number three, we got a lot of backwards kind of understanding and definitions and just. A lot of abstract ideas going on uh, so this video is going to be a little bit longer because there's a lot of just information going on before we get into the actual uh, understanding of um, the examples and stuff like that so let's kind of get a move on then and hopefully this doesn't take too long so the zeros of a polynomial function are just where the graph or function crosses the x-axis so for instance if I have a quadratic remember that's a u then right here and right here where it touches the x-axis, that is called a zero. Now, we call it a zero, but we also call it a root. We also call it a solution. Or we also call it an x-intercept. So there are four things that we call the one very thing that it crosses the x-axis. Zero, root, solution, x-intercept. You have to know all of those names in case they appear on a test or a quiz. 
Just because if you only know one and the other one appears and you don't know it, then you're probably not going to do very well. We want to know the maximum number of zeros for any different functions. So if a graph is constant, what that means is like y equals 3. Okay, so y equals 3 is a flat line at y is equal to 3. So this right here is 3. This graph is flat, so therefore it does not cross the x-axis. Okay, so this one might not have any intersections of the x-axis. So this would be no zeros. Now, if the graph was y equals 0, so this is just the special case right here, special case. If it was y equals 0, then that means that that line actually is the x-axis. So let me get a different color here. Uh, let me see if I can do a different color. That is the x-axis. So that means that that line would touch. So like if this is the x-axis and I want to graph y equals 0, it's the same line. So that means it touches everywhere. So this would be infinite solutions. Infinite solutions if it was this one case. If it wasn't that one case, then it's always going to have zero solutions. It can never cross the x-axis. That's a little confusing. You won't have to see that. I'm just telling you that there are some uh, differences between different things here. All right, so linear. What about linear? Well, linear is a straight line. So like y equals like mx plus b. Remember that? Like slope and y-intercept, right? You're graphing a line. So if there's a line, this graph only touches the x-axis one time. One time, one time, one time, linear, line, one time. Okay, quadratic, that's like y equals x squared. Okay, and so uh, quadratic, the maximum number of times this can touch the x-axis is one, two. One, two. Okay, this is two times, two times, two times. That's the maximum number. So one time for linear, quadratic is two. Technically, quad means two. Quad means two. Okay. Cubic. This means three. Y equals X to the third. So this is going to look like this. Boop, boop, boop. So how many times does that touch the x-axis? One, two, three. Times a lady. Cubic means three. Quartic. This is a fourth. So guess what this looks like? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, four times. Hopefully you can see that there's a little bit of a, like a, I don't know, a shortcut where this number, the four, is the maximum times that it could touch. That doesn't mean it's going to touch four times. It just means it's the maximum number it's going to touch. So if this is y to the, or x to the fifth, then this means it's going to touch five times. One, two, three, four, five. Right there, right there, right there, right there, and right there. Five times. I'm not trying to confuse you here. It's, it's kind of common, common sense. That's the maximum number. It is potentially possible for some graphs to, say, have a maximum of five, but only touch once. Like, it's possible. Or it's possible for this graph of four to touch zero times. It's possible. All right? It is possible. But the maximum number is always the maximum exponent. The degree is the highest degree. Highest degree. That's the maximum amount of zeros you can have. Okay? All right. Let's scroll down a little bit. A little bit. End behavior. End behavior. So... The graph, we have this graph, like on this coordinate plane from like here to here, okay? And the graph could like be coming up and up and up and up and up. And all of a sudden, it does whatever it wants in here. It like crosses a million times. It doesn't matter. But then over here at the very, like the furthest it could possibly be, like infinity, like the graph is either going to go up or it's going to come down. And that's what happens, okay? So that's what end behavior is. We don't care about the middle stuff. We care about the end, like if it goes down and up, or if it goes up and down, or if it goes up and up, or if it goes down and down. That's what we care about. We care about the end stuff. 
So the end behavior is the behavior of the graph as x approaches positive or negative infinity. So like if I have a graph here and the graph is like doing this boop, 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 and then doing this. Over here the graph is approaching positive infinity and over here the graph is going towards negative infinity. What's the graph actually doing? Well as x gets bigger as x gets bigger to the right, x gets bigger. What's y doing? y is going up. y is going up. y is going up. So what's the biggest number that y can go to? Well, y is going towards infinity. Over here, x is getting smaller. Smaller. So if x is getting smaller in this direction, what's going on with my y's? My y's are going up. So where's that going? That's going to infinity. So we have a lot of different things going on, but there's a shortcut. We don't have to necessarily look at graphs. We don't have to. We gotta know the understanding, the definition. So the degree of the leading coefficient can determine the end behavior of a graph without actually graphing it, okay? So here's an example. Y equals three X squared. The degree is even, 2 is even, the leading coefficient of that exponent is positive. So this is positive, okay, positive 3. So what happens, and this is how you're going to have to write it, and we'll get to some examples, but this is how we're going to have to write it. And this is, this is like the shortcut process. This graph, because it's a quadratic, is going to look like this, where the graph is going to go up in both directions. So because the graph is going up in both directions, we have to say this. This is how I write it. As, oops, that's supposed to be as, not x. I'm not trying to chop down a tree here. I'm not Paul Bunyan, even though I might look like him. Whoa! As x approaches, that's that arrow, approaches. As x approaches negative infinity. So as x gets smaller, what's going on with my y? My y is getting bigger. So as x approaches negative infinity, the y value, which is what we call f of x, you have to use f of x, not y. It's more proper. It's function notation. X, f of x approaches positive infinity, right? As x gets smaller, 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 my y is getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger until I'm off my screen here, until I'm off my green screen, okay? Well, also... As x gets smaller, y gets bigger. But as x gets bigger, as it goes bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger this way, guess what happens to the y? Well, the y also gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So as the y goes this way, or as the x goes bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger this way, the y gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger until I'm off my green screen. Okay? It's just pretty awesome. Like... Just simple math, right? Now, what happens if the coefficient is negative and the exponent is still even? So this graph is going to look like this. Okay, where I have 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. Negative 2 is a negative, so that means the graph is now flipped upside down, not right side up. Okay, so this is going to say this. As x gets smaller, y gets small. As x gets smaller, y gets smaller, right? You can see that with the arrows. As x gets bigger, which is in this direction here, y gets smaller. For the even exponents, they all go in the same direction. So, like, they either both go up or they both go down. They both go down. They can't go, I don't think I can, well, can't go, like, up and down. Up and up and down. They can't do that. That's not, that's not even. That's odd. And we're going to get to that right now. So, an odd. So, if y is equal to, say, 3x to the third, this graph is going to look something like this. So, if the leading coefficient is positive, which is 3 all right, which is 3, then the odd exponent, the odd degree is saying 
that as x gets smaller, f of x gets smaller. As x gets bigger, f of x also gets bigger. As x gets smaller, so does my y. As x gets bigger, so does my x. The odd follow suit. Okay, the odds follow suit. Unless we flipped them. What? So now the leading coefficient is negative. So now we got a negative 2x to the 7th power. That graph is going to look like this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. As x gets smaller, y gets bigger. Right? As x gets smaller, y gets bigger, bigger, bigger. As x gets bigger, y gets smaller. It approaches negative infinity. It just keeps on going down, down, baby. Don't streak, no, maybe. That's basically what happens. I don't know the rest of the words. That's why I was singing. I don't know them. Okay? All right. So those are my notes. Now let's get to some examples. Hopefully that doesn't really make sense. That's okay. You're going to have plenty of examples to do that hopefully will... Uh, clear up some confusion. Alrighty, here we go. I want to state the end behavior, determine if the function is odd or even, and then state the number of real zeros. Real zeros are where it crosses the x-axis. Okay, where it crosses the x-axis. So, and part A, let's do that first because that's the easiest, okay? This crosses here and here. So this has two real zeros. This one has one, two, three, three real zeros. This one has one, two, three, four, five real zeros. All right? Now the next one is going to see, it's pretty easy to tell if it's even or odd. If it's even, both the functions need to be down or up, like both sides of it. If it's odd, one can be up and one can be down, or vice versa. I can just keep on flipping, flipping, flippity flip, flop, flip, or they got to be both up, which is even, right? So in this case, they're both down. It's pointing down. So this is an even function. This one is up and that one's down, so this is an odd function. This one is up and that one's down, so this is also odd. Those are easy. That's pretty, pretty easy. Now let's look at end behavior. I want to care about where the arrows are going. That's the end behavior that I care about. So as x approaches negative infinity, as x gets smaller, what's going on with this arrow? Well, it's going down, so f of x gets smaller. As x approaches positive infinity, which is over here, What's going on with the arrow? Well, it's going down. So f of x also is going to negative infinity. And that's part A. That's done. That's it. That's it. Not too bad, is it? Number two, we're in the middle one here. As x approaches negative infinity, f of x approaches positive infinity because it goes up, the arrow goes up. As x approaches infinity, the x goes down, or the y goes down because the arrow is going down. f of x goes towards negative infinity. I want you guys to pause the video real quick. Try to do part B there, or the last one, the third, the third option. I'm Michael Scott. That should say world's best teacher. Pause the video. It's the same as the middle one. Okay, they're both odd. They both have the same um, end behavior. As x goes to negative infinity, y gets bigger. As x goes to infinity, f of x gets smaller. So there you go there for that one. We got a, a couple more examples here. And uh, then this video will be done. And this lesson will be done. Wicka wicka. Slim shady. Here we go. Match the graph to its end behavior. Now these are the graphs that would appear on a like TI calculator. Uh, graphing calculator. Texas Instrument. Um, you might have one. Your friends might have one. Um, if you're going to be taking you know, high level mathematics, you probably should invest in one. But right now not that big of a deal we're gonna be doing some stuff on graphing calculators in the next section 
but we're going to be using Desmos, which is an online graphing calculator. What? What? And you'll have access to that on the quiz too, as well. So, trying to help you guys out. Number one, we know that this is an odd highest degree. This is an odd highest degree. And this one here, this is a two and that's a two, so that's a four. So this is an even degree. Okay, that's an even degree. Now, let's look at leading coefficients. The leading coefficient here is one. That's a one. The leading coefficient here is a negative two, because that's a negative two. The leading coefficient here is a negative two, because that's in front of everything, okay? Now, it's gonna help us out with even functions, because even functions either go down or go up. They go down or they go up, both sides. So the only one here that's even is part A, is number A, letter A. Number, letter, I don't know. So that is gonna be number three. Because it's even, so they both go down. And the reason it goes down is because the negative leading coefficient makes it go down, okay? Now, here's what happens. This is gonna be a little weird, you gotta understand this. They're both odd, so both of these functions, B or C, are both gonna go with one or two. We gotta determine which one goes where. If you remember from your notes, or you can actually go back to your notes from the, le the previous page, since the leading coefficient is 1, okay, so I'm going to kind of circle this one down here. Since the leading coefficient is positive, and it's an odd degree, the end behavior is x approaches negative infinity, f of x approaches uh, negative infinity. As x approaches infinity, f of x approaches infinity. So that means one side goes up, one side goes down. Actually, it's going to go like this. This side's coming from the bottom, and this side's going towards the top. So that's part C. So number one goes to C. Number one goes to C, therefore number two is B. Because again, that's in your notes. Okay, It's the opposite of this. As x approaches negative infinity, f of x goes towards positive infinity. As x approaches infinity, f of x goes towards negative infinity, which is what's going on in number two. But um, slow down, pause the videos, take your time, make sure you have the correct notes, make sure you do the practice, and make sure your answers on the practice are correct with the answers that are provided. If they're not, if you're just doing them and not checking them, like you're going to get it wrong and like, you're never going to get it right. So make sure you ask questions if you don't understand it. Make sure you're doing the practice. Okay? I will see you in the next video. Deuces.